Hi, Melanie Menschinger here, illustrator for Gina K Designs. Today I have a new project for you with my newest set from Gina K Designs, A Year of Flowers 3. I'm going to show you just some simple tips and tricks for doing some masking so you can put all of these images easily into one of my coordinating container stamps. This wash tub comes from my Beyond Basket set, but you could also use containers from my Buds and Vases, Holiday Basket, Spring Basket, um, what else is there? Let's see, Stately Flowers 9, lots of different containers in my line of stamps. So really, really fun, very easy to do. This card only takes about 10 or 15 minutes to stamp and color. The other products that you're going to need for this card, in addition to the, the A Year of Flowers 3 set, are the Beyond Basket set. So we're going to be using the wash tub. You'll need a large block for that. And this also has a wheelbarrow, a wagon, and a barrel in it, so lots of different options for these different flowers. I'm also going to be using the Scripty Sang set, and this is free for a limited time with a $75 order, so very versatile greetings. Cardstock that we're going to be using today, I've got some of the Gina K Pure Luxury Powder Blue and the White. Got just some adhesive and then some scissors for cutting out those masks. You'll use just some regular printer paper or copy paper for creating the mask, or you can use some post-it notes and that helps stick them down. The ink I'm using today, I've got the Memento Tuxedo Black. I normally use Gina K Black Onyx for doing my line art stamping, but I found that with the really fine detail in these flowers, I'm liking the Memento with the alcohol markers. So both will have uses in my toolkit and she carries both in our store. And then for some of the greenery in that set, I'm going to be using the Gina K Fresh Asparagus and the Grass Green. So very minimal supplies for this set. The last thing, I've got my Spectrum Noir markers. So I'm going to be using the CR2 and the CR5, the TB3, the IB3, and the TB4 for the blue flowers, the DR1 and the DR6 for the red flower, the CT3 and CT4 for those yellow centers, the GG2 for the shadow, and then the BGR4 and the GG2 on the wash tote. I will post all the measurements and the supplies below. All right, so let's get to stamping. I'll put this here so that you can kind of see where we're going. But when you get the set, you're going to want to make some masks because these images look so beautiful on their own, but they look even better and more impressive when you put them all together. So you're going to need some masks so you can have some things being in the front and some things being in the back. So what I would recommend that you do is when you get your set, you peel off the sheet that's on there, ink up the whole thing while it's still on the sheet, and then just press it down onto a piece of scratch paper. Pull it away. You've already got all of the images stamped on your paper. You can cut them out one at a time just to use that maybe one flower and leaf that you're wanting to use at the moment, or you can stream one of your favorite programs on Netflix and then just cut them all out and then save them in a bag so that you are ready to go for any time that you need these stamps. The only masks that we're going to need for this particular project are the two daisies. And a little trick here that I'm gonna show you so that you don't have to make more masks than you need, you'll see from this wash tub that the two different daisies span pretty much all the way across that tub. So when I do that, I'm not going to have to have multiple masks down and because I'm using different images rather than this daisy, this daisy, this daisy, I don't have to make three masks of the same image. I can just use ones that I already have in this little basket. So a variety of different kinds of blooms, that's going to be a more interesting arrangement, although you could do all of one image, but it's less cutting and you know that I always like to save time wherever I can. So here is our mat. It's four and an eighth square. We've got some big images and big greetings, so it's going to take up most of this layout. If, as long as the stamp is dry, you can lay it down onto your cardstock and not worry about it getting anything on it. So I can just put this on here to kind of try to figure out where I'm going to be putting that tub. I don't mind if it actually goes off the top or the sides of the mat because we're going to have a really full layout. But we just need a little bit of room at the bottom for our greeting. 
So our flowers are going to be about a third of the way down, between a third and a half of the way down. So I've got my masks. Let me grab a small block for these daisies. Okay, so I'm going to stamp first this open daisy right about here. I want to make it look like it's just peeking over the edge there. And then this one that you can see the side view off to the side. And the way I'm stamping this today, you really don't even need to use the stems hardly, just in one little spot. Okay, now when you cover these up, one there, one there, and then I'll ink up my tub. Okay, I'm just going to place that right so it looks like they're just peeking over the edge. Okay. Lift that away. I'll go ahead and add my greetings. So I'm going to do a happy birthday because that's the card that I send out the most. It's right there at the bottom. Okay. And now let's go ahead and fill in some of those other flowers. So I'm going to do opposites here, and that's going to be more interesting arrangement, but also then I can just leave my mats in place. So I'm going to put one over here. And so, whereas this one is straight up, you're going to want to vary the angles so that you just have more interest in the design. It looks like a different flower. And then the last two are going to be this more open one. So I'm going to first put one over here. And then I'm going to move these masks so that I can put one in the back. And after we're done with these flowers, we're going to move to the colored ink that I use the baby's breath for and the ferns. And I am so excited about these two images, probably more than the flowers in this set, just because they're so different from anything else that I have in my stamping toolbox. And they're so versatile for adding texture and just a light, light, delicate touch to my cards. Okay, so I'm going to take, let me do the stem real quick on this. Okay. So we're going to see just a hint of a stem right there. All the other blossoms are covering the stem on the other flowers, but we do need just a little bit of one to connect that there to the wash tub. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover up this daisy. And we have a clear stamp, so I can see I don't even need to cover this one up, but if you want to, you can. I just inked at the very top of that stem, and I'm going to make it pointing towards the center. Okay, so you've got it right there. All right, now let's add the baby's breath. So I recommend that you use two different colors of green. It's just going to be more interesting and give more depth to your design. So I've got the long baby's breath here. There's two different pieces. We'll start with the fresh asparagus. So I'm going to just lay this on here. Put a little bit there. And put some over here. And I was looking through my basket earlier, and I'll show you in just a moment. I found another card that I had done a floral arrangement on quite a while ago. But just adding in a little bit of the baby's breath, it really just gave it some new life. So I'm going to be using these stamps a lot. Then let's do some of the fern. This one I'm going to do in the grass green, which is just a little bit lighter. And I'm going to cover up, let's see where did that go, there we go. Cover this one up to add the fern. And Gina added some masking paper to the store, but I wasn't able to order it in time. So that is on my list when I see that it comes back in stock, because you can use it over and over again. It's repositionable but it stays down a little better than just a regular paper mask would. So very handy if you do a lot of masking. So I'm just gonna put in a tiny bit of a fern there just so I have a little bit of greenery back behind those daisies. Okay, so that's all the stamping that I'm gonna do. 
You could put in a little bit more. There's that one smaller piece and it just came off of my stamp set. Anyway, on this one, you can see I added just the individual piece and that one is nice because there's just one tiny little stem. It's very short, so you could just add it to the edges there. So let's go ahead and color this. So I'm gonna take my markers. I'm gonna start by doing the shadow. I used the GG2 today um, instead of the BG3, which is one of my favorites for shadows, just because I have so many blue tones, the base and then the flowers. So I just wanted this one to be a little bit cooler than that warmer BG shadow. Okay, now I'm going to do all of my centers. So I'm going to start with my lighter yellow and just fill the centers in. And I will compare the different cards in a moment. The one that I showed on my blog earlier and on Facebook was stamped in the black onyx. And I had some bleeding just because there's so much detail in the center of these flowers. Okay, so now I'm using the CT4 and I'm just warming up the bottom of those centers to make it look more dimensional. You could even choose an orange or a deeper yellow if you wanted. Okay, now let's color in the pink flowers. So just quickly fill in the pink petals. So let's start with my lighter shade just to fill in that base color. And then let's put in the lighter blue. And doing all these without shading, this just shows you if you really only have time just to do the one, or if you don't have two shades of blue or two shades of pink, how you can just lay down one color and then wait a moment for that to dry and then layer over it with the same color, it will get deeper. So you don't have to have all the markers to get the looks that you want. So see, so you could go back in here and it will deepen. And then I'm gonna make one of the flowers red. I usually like to have one really contrasting color just to make the whole design pop. Just have one stand out. You know I love red if you've watched my other videos. And then I'll add the DG3 on that stem. Okay. All right. Now let's add just a little bit of darker color to the centers here. So just where you have all those lines in your stamped image concentrated, that's where the flower is folding in and the outside of the petals is going to be a little bit brighter. You can also touch just a tip the end of it there if you want and shade underneath the petals or underneath where it's casting shadow from one of the other flowers. Now let's use the darker pink and again we're just going to put that right in the middle there and you can pull that out just do some little streaks just following the lines in the illustration and I'm going to go to the underside of those petals that are down below these flowers really color themselves. They're very easy to do. Don't need a lot. And then I'm going to add some of this TV4 here. And not because of the light, but just because so often flowers are really darker in the center. And they get lighter as they go out to the edge. But I'm going to make it a little bit darker, these undersides. If you want to do just right on the edge of the tip. Just to add a little more color, you can do that. Okay. And now let's color that wash tub. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this BG4, BGR4, excuse me, and I'm going to color in the handles. Solid. On top of that tub. And then I'm just going to trace the underside of these flowers because they're going to be casting a shadow down onto that tub 
as if the light is coming from above. And then I'm just going to go along and just carefully but quickly pull in some lines starting from the outside edge and just keeping them parallel with those lines that you see in the illustration. Pulling it out so that the sides are a little bit darker because it's rounded. Catching a highlight there in the middle, but then also so you have that look of metal those kind of striations and streaks that you see. Add it a little bit more to the edges. But I'm leaving just a little bit of room so it looks like there's some highlights. And then I'm going back with this GG2. And this is just gonna blend it a little bit, but then also create kind of an in-between shade so you're not just having white, white, And if you want to make any areas darker, you can go in and do that. Oh, I like it just like that. So just a little bit of adhesive on the back of your mat. Layer it on and your card's complete. So these are the cards that I did with the Memento ink. So you can see no bleeding here. This one, and I made the wash tub a little darker, but you can see how much darker these flowers are in the middle. So if you're going for that look, if you want it all to be a lot darker, then definitely go with the Gina K Black Onyx. If you want the image really more true and the colors to be brighter, then you'll want to go with something like the Memento Tuxedo Black. But this is such a dark, nice, solid black ink that really wicks into the paper. So for bold images, that's definitely the better choice. I hope this gives you a lot of ideas for how you can mask these into some of my other containers and different ways that you can make arrangements and definitely different ways that you can use the baby's breath. Here is another sample that I showed earlier in the week. This is a picture from Stately Flowers 9, but I also want to show you how I added just a little bit of that baby's breath to an old card that I made with my Arrange with Love frame. So you can see I stamped both the large and the small baby's breath in just a few spots and it just really feels like it's growing right out of that frame there. So I just love that. I'm going to be adding this to most of my floral arrangements, I think, from now on. And the final thing that I'm going to show you, this is the baby's breath stamped in some of our different greens, browns, and grays. So this is the apple mint, the fresh asparagus, the grass green. This is the warm cocoa, the jelly bean green, and then finally the moonlit fog. And then these are all stamped off versions. So lots of different combinations that you can do that really look nice with this. And again, it just gives you just some texture and really makes it feel like it's very natural and like it's growing. Thank you for visiting today. Please visit us at Gina K Designs and Stamp TV for more ideas and inspiration using all of our stamp sets. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching today and God bless.